name Victor. I'm the owner of Mega Liquor Warehouse. I've been doing this for 33 years. I uh, grew up on a farm. After that, I became industrial engineer. Didn't do much because I uh, do this. And I went to every alcohol the seminar and distillery and winery you could think of. And uh, this is what you end up with. Somebody know a little bit about, too much about alcohol. Tequila is um, as confused as any product we sell. Everybody come in and say, hey, give me uh, tequila gold. Well, about uh, 20 years ago, uh, one product was dominating the entire industry. And um, a uh, smart guy went to uh, Mexico and started bringing 100% tequilas. And um, the, that big dog used to come to the store at that time and I would tell them in uh, 10 years, you guys would lose 50% of your business. And they were chuckling, they're almost gonna die laughing. And guess what? They wish I was right <laughs> because they lost a lot more than 10%. <laughs> And because you could see it on your and the customer's face when they taste something and they their eyes are wide open You know, they find something that much better than what they were get now. What did I say before gold? Anything with gold is made the same way. Where do we have our? Uh, weapon of choice that brown sugar, but it's made from brown sugar uh, the word gold tequilas or rum or or whiskey or anything Tequila is it's supposed to be 100% from the maguey plants. The maguey plants takes, do you guys know how many years it takes for a plant to grow? Uh, a couple months? Yes, it takes eight years. <laughs> minimum, minimum, uh, sometimes six, sometimes 12, but average is eight. Okay. How do you know that uh, plant is ready to harvest? It's pretty much, this is the plant, uh, you know, and uh, it, it, it becomes pinkish on the bottom. Pinkish at the bottom, okay. Yes. What happens if, uh, if they don't harvest it in time? It becomes, it, the flowers come out and pretty much the whole pulp got destroyed. So you have, you have to hit that you have sweet it, spot. Exactly, yeah. correct. And so um, what does the agave plants look like? They look like a pineapple, but 150 pound pineapple. And so they usually cut it in three pieces or two pieces, depends on the size of it. They, they take it to an oven. They, uh, they put heat on it for like 24 hours or depends on what they need, depends on the size of the plants. And they take it to a machine that mullet. Okay. They take the, uh, they screen it. The liquid goes into a huge vat. Pretty much all alcohol exactly the same. Right. Once you see one distiller, you see all of them. They're okay. basically the same concept. So what they do, they until the yeast uh, take its magic, and in Mexico they use local yeast only, they don't add any yeast. Uh, when it becomes, they just uh, put it in furnace and they boil it and they separate the vapor from the water. Basically that's their job. And even the leftover, what do they do? They give it to the cow to eat. So they don't throw anything away. Now, a lot of people, they come in and say, look, why tequila differs so much? Because, I mean, there's a huge tequila, a huge difference in tequila. There's the gringo style tequila. What does that mean, gringo style tequila? Now you, you mean difference in flavor or price or both? Flavors. Flavors, okay. So, a gringo style tequila is usually very light. Has no, has, it's almost like vodka with hint of tequila. Okay. That's what we like in the United States. Correct. And in Mexico, it's not a compliment when they call us a gringo. They call us gringo because they think we don't know what we're doing. You know, it's like, hey, these <laughs> gringos, they like the no flavor tequilas. And yet, and that's why you see a product like Patron only does well here. It doesn't do well at all over there because oh, really? what it is, has no, has very little smell and hint of the uh, tequila flavor. And that's people in this country who like that. Yeah. And that's why the mixto does very well here. What is mixto tequila? Mixto tequila is a vodka, 49%, tequila 51%. Okay. And that is junk. Well, and you can just barely call it tequila at that point, right? It's actually 51% has to be. Was a uh, root infestation. And so they had a big problem. So the Mexican government allowed them to cheat. Basically, they cheated. Okay. They add in, they don't call the vodka actually, they call the grain neutral spirit, but, but it's basically the same thing. So what they do, they mix them. And uh, people in the United States, they like the taste because it's lighter. Because you add in vodka, you soften it up. 
And of course, people, think, oh, wow, it's good. I like my tequilas. Now. But of course, that's not good for you. It's not traditional it's, either. Yes, but I mean, in the United States, it took off and uh, they make more money. Why should they go back to the old ways? It was supposed to be temporary. But since um, it did well. Yeah, they found a market for it. Yes, and uh, in this store, we call them junk tequila and we don't sell them. Junk, junk tequila right yes. here. Yes, yes. Now, the opposite style is the Mexican style. Okay. It has a lot more aroma and usually grown in the highlands. Why is it in the highlands? Because when you, when the rain comes in in the mountains or the high areas, uh, the water seep through and they don't get as much uh, rain. And then when you get a lot of water with these plants, it's just like the grape, like anything else. If you get too much watery, it becomes uh, l uh, less smell, less flavor. It's a little diluted. Diluted, exactly. Okay. And that's why in the United States, people like diluted. They want that flavor. In Mexico, it's considered like uh, extremely bad stuff. Okay. Now, uh, the difference between them, if you see a silver, generally, it's a mixto. If you see gold, it's mixto. Uh, gold is not just mixed up, mixed up plus brown sugar. Now the Blanco is not aged at all. Like this says the Blanco, okay. it's not aged at all. They it never seen oak and in Mexico they actually like it. When you make margarita, it has to be Blanco because the oak will muddy the margarita taste. Unless you're making a heavy style margarita, winter margarita, which we, we usually uh, do in the winter. Uh, those are... Um, you could get away with using a rebosado. That's why in this country, rebosado is the most popular style. Why? Because why should I buy two bottles when I could get away with one? There it is. One is, uh, it's only aged up to 11 months, the rebosado. Usually, like something like this, maybe about four or five months, six months. Usually average about six months. But in order to call it uh, rebosado, anything under between like two months to 11 months, they call it Repostado. So anything that is aged that long is called Repostado. Okay. Now, 11 months and older, up to two years, is Añejo. Like this is actually two years. You see how dark it is? Okay. This is a two-year-old Añejo. Now, is this is still affected by uh, the brown sugar or is this... No, this has no... No brown None sugar. of these things because they're not called gold. Okay. You will see none of the product... Obviously, in this room, I don't put any junk, so yeah, there's so no, there's no, <laughs> yeah, somewhat. <laughs> so anyway, but there's a even though we say there's two style, but there's a variation of like smell this. This is more. This is like organic tequila, and you oh, see wow. it has like in Mexico they desire this kind of smell. Yeah. This is what they want. The the maguey plant smell. Like see this. This is what a gringo tequila is. It has hardly any smell. Yeah, I can barely smell anything. Because what it is, people in this country, this is what we want, where we want, uh, in Mexico, they want this one. This is a variation of the same thing. Like these two, it's almost the same thing. Now, a new stuff is coming up where people want more from their tequila than just the traditional. Like, girls like sweeter stuff or flavored stuff. So now what they make is like a, a um, coconut or uh, almond or strawberry. I'm going to taste you on the coconut because I think it's like incredible. How the heck do they do that? And a coconut, usually we got coconut rum, right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm but, the, but tequila tastes actually better than rum. You'll see. You know, it's I like... Know, I'm kind of skeptical. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll find out. To the test. <laughs> yes. You're gonna get a shot anyway, so you have to. You don't have to work it. <laughs> the tequila and the uh, the coconut complement each other so well. Oh wow, that smells great. Yes, it actually tastes pretty amazing. It's actually some car uh, fresheners. They taste like uh, they smell like this. Yeah, this is something that I think could get a lot of people in trouble. And uh, and what we do. Like the almond, actually even more popular right now is the biggest uh, flavor is the almond. A sweet and sour almond is amazing. Like uh, people love that. They mix the sweet and sour and almond and it's like heavenly drink. It happened to me once where a lady come in and I didn't know, I came from an area where people have money. They come in and say, give me that. But in this area, because it's low income uh, on the most part, uh, I came to a lady, she's about eight years old. And I asked her, can I suggest this bottle of vodka is too darn more, but it's so much better. And she looked at me and she said, honey, 
I could fill my basket with good stuff, but that's all I have. I almost started crying. I said, okay, I just learned something. And what I learned is, hey, this is what, where, where I am. But most of our customers sadly come in and they just so brainwashed. And if we don't have the right uh, junk tequila for them, they just walk out. They wouldn't even ask. And I don't really mind. I just don't want to make money out of making people sick. Well, they, and I feel that you could make people sick from giving them a product like that. For those of you in town that are interested in something new, see this face? That's who the man you want to talk to. Don't be afraid. Ask him anything you want. Unfortunately, uh, you might end up staying too long. <laughs> because <laughs> well, I, be <laughs> yes, because I, I usually talk to people on, in the aisles. And they would come and they say, uh, what is this? And say, you know, sorry, but it's much easier to taste it. And I bring them to the tasting room and they say, ah, okay, we can taste it. Of course, we can. Mm -hmm.